Gilbert Arenas disrespects Julius Randle and the New York Knicks, and I'm here to break it all down. All that and much more on the Knicks Digest. What's up, guys? It's your boy Dario from Knicks Digest, and we're going to go right into today's video. So yesterday on Gilbert Arenas' YouTube show, Gil's Arena, they had a slew of different topics, and one of them was regarding the New York Knicks. Now, they talked about the OG and Anovi trade. They talked about Julius Randle. Uh, they also talked about a few other topics within uh, the New York Knicks organization. And if you take a look here, Gilbert Arenas has some choice words for the New York Knicks. You're top, four every, you're top four every year. One has 18 championships. The other has 18 championships. You're ass sitting there with nothing, but you're spending championship money. And when he's talking about the 18 championships, he's talking about the Lakers and he's talking about the Boston Celtics. And of course, the New York Knicks, we have two championships as far as our uh, as far as our, the history of our franchise. We have two. Now, I'm definitely going to talk about that a little later in this video. But when the when the when Gil's Arena, when they brought up the topic of the New York Knicks, the first thing they focused on was they focused on the OG and Anobi trade. So OG and Anobi being traded for RG Barrett and Emmanuel Quickly. And a draft pick, I believe. And then we got um, Precious Achua, Malachi Flynn, and OG Ananobi. And basically, Gilbert Arenas, Rashad McCants, Brandon Jennings, they kind of, the way they described it was it didn't really move the needle. Um, they talked about RJ Barrett and how OG Ananobi is going to be a little a little better of a complimentary piece. They were talking about how RJ Barrett was just a little bit more, it seemed like, he tried to get his shine a little bit more than was needed. Um, I mean, Gilbert Arenas, one of the things he said that was kind of crazy was he said coming into the draft, he was more of a one, which I don't really ever remember. He played in Duke for one season, and I don't really remember him being a one. If anything, he was a shooting guard. So coming into the NBA draft, I don't really believe that NBA teams were looking at him as a point guard. Brandon Jennings, um, talk, talking about the trade, he kind of brought up R.J. Barrett as if he's going to be a player moving forward in his career, where he's going to be a player where you're just looking to throw him in the trade. Um, Brandon Jennings kind of brought up the topic of how, like, what has R.J. Barrett done since he's been with the Knicks, and... It was a little hard to hear. <laughs> Brandon Jennings, actually a former Nick, played with us for maybe a season or, or two. Um, but yeah, R.J. Barrett is my guy. But as far as and Brandon Jennings was definitely a, a freakish athlete, um, scoring 55 points in his rookie year with the Milwaukee Bucks in the NBA. Brandon Jennings was he was that guy when he was when he was in the league and we, when he was up and coming. Uh, he went to Italy to play for a year after high school. He was I think he was the first player to ever do that. So he definitely set the foundation for a lot of players moving forward. But as far as hearing Brandon Jennings say that about R.J. Barrett, that hurt my feelings. R.J., I'm always going to be an R.J. stan. I hope he does well in Toronto. But, I mean, he's not wrong when he kind of says that. Like, R.J., since he got with the Knicks, it was a lot of expectations. It was expectations that, unfortunately, I don't think he was able to meet. But as far as the overall verdict of the trade, we still we still got to wait and see, uh, depending on how the Knicks do this season. Uh, if they get into the playoffs and how far they go into the playoffs, uh, I feel like that'll be a fair assessment of how of what the trade was. Now, moving on to the next topic within the Gills Arena episode, uh, they talked about Julius Randle, and there were a lot of interesting words regarding Julius Randle. So, just Josiah Johnson uh, talked about just Julius Randle's year, and Josiah also threw out the question if they believe that Julius Randle is going to end up being an all-NBA player this season. Now, for the last few seasons, Julius Randle has made the all-NBA team. Um, and Gilbert Arenas, he did say that he does predict Julius Randle to end up on a all NBA team, but he gave the criticism that I give, that Chris gives, that a lot of us Knicks fans give is when Julius Randle got here, it's, it's pretty much for the, for the most part has been a steady consumption of good basketball. But when Knicks fans, what we want to see is we want to see that that leap. We want to see him go from averaging 20, 24, 25 to make that leap going into maybe 28 points. And Shaq, all the time on Inside NBA, he always says that whatever you, whatever you average in the regular season, you need to up that in the playoffs. He says uh, for a good regular season, you need to average 28 and 10 if you're a dominant big man. Now, Julius Randle isn't necessarily a big man. He is a power forward. But he's not necessarily a big man. But hopefully you catch my drift where we want to see Julius Randle take that next leap into being a dominant and to being a consistent all-star. 
and Rashad McCants, who I have a lot of respect for. Shout out Rashad. My opinion, I mean, Brandon Jennings has been doing this a little bit more, but Rashad, in my opinion, has been the only one to really go against what Gilbert Arenas says. But Rashad actually threw out a, a very interesting comp. He compared Julius Randle to Zach Randolph. A, again, another former New York Knick. Uh, Zach Randolph, as far as their games, that's a that's not a bad comparison because both of their games are below the rim. Julius Randle really likes to use his bully ball. Zach Randolph is known for being a bully. Of course, he's known for that quote. I believe he was talking, uh, was it Lance Stevenson or somebody? I can't remember who it was, but he told him, he's like, he's from where the bullies get bullied. So, and Zach Randolph, just a back-to-the-basket type of game. Couldn't jump over a piece of paper on the floor, but he was a consistent 20-10. and 10. And Julius Randle is definitely more athletic than Zach Randolph. But when you think of Julius Randle, you don't think about this super freakish, athletic, above-the-rim type player. He's, again, like I said, he's putting he's putting you against the basket. He's putting his back against the basket, bullying you, putting his shoulder into your chest. And that's how he's getting his buckets. And then that led to the final Nick topic, which they talked about. Um, and this is where Gilbert Arenas has some choice words for the Knicks organization. Basically... Gilbert Arena says that whoever is working for the Knicks organization, which included Leon Rose, which included World Wide West, he said that they're doing a horrible job in attracting talent. And Gilbert just goes on to say about how the Knicks, is, the New York market is a market equivalent to Boston, to L.A., to Miami, except those markets are able to attract talent. Obviously, LeBron going to the Lakers, Anthony Davis going to the Lakers, Jimmy Butler going to Miami, Boston Celtics with all the players they've acquired throughout their years. But the Knicks, we have who? In the past decade, we've only been been able to attract Carmelo. And before that, it was Amari. Amari was the reason why Melo came to the Knicks. But before those two, who were the marquee players? The only marquee player I can think of was this guy, Patrick Ewing, who carried the Knicks all throughout the whole 90s. Gilbert goes on to talk about a couple of players that the Knicks are trying to target. Now, the first player, I'll be honest with you, Jalen Green from the Houston Rockets, I'm not too familiar with. I do know the type of player he is. Uh, he's a shooting guard. Uh, 6'4", super athletic, plays above the rim. And if you take a look at his numbers here, 17.5 points, 4.5 rebounds, 3 assists, shooting 40% from the field, 35% from three-point. Now, the thing with Jalen Green is the only thing I know is that this might be his third season in the league. And this year, the Houston Rockets definitely turned it around with Ime Adoka. Um, Ime Adoka coming to the Houston Rockets organization and completely changing the culture. And this is why I'm... I'm a little hesitant about the Knicks even thinking about going after a Jalen Green. In my opinion, we don't know what kind of player he is. We don't know if he's a good numbers but bad team kind of guy. And when I say that, it's basically like you're putting up really good numbers, you're getting your numbers, maybe 18 points, 19, 20 points, but your team has a losing record. Now, this season, like I keep saying, Emil Doka has turned it around. They have been a, They have been a respectful defensive team. But I haven't really paid attention to the Houston Rockets. That's not one of the teams that I go to on League Pass, or that's not one of the teams that I go to when I look for highlights. So maybe he has turned it around. Maybe he he has shown that he can be a player that the that an organization can depend on. So as far as right now, I'm not really in agreement with what Gilbert Arena said about Jalen Green. But all the luck to him. Hopefully he does turn his career around and hopefully becomes a respectful NBA. Now, the second player that Gilbert Arenas did bring up is someone that I'm very aware of because, one, we actually just played him a couple days ago. And, two, he's just taking the league by storm. And if you guessed Anthony Edwards, that is correct. Anthony Edwards averaging 26 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, shooting 45% from the field, 37.9 uh, from 3-point field goal. Now, again, we just played the Timberwolves on Monday, and we did beat them. Um, and OG Ananobi's first game with Precious Achua, OG Ananobi was guarding Anthony Edwards. And for the most part, he definitely frustrated Anthony Edwards. But besides that game alone, Anthony Edwards, in my opinion, is going to be an MVP caliber type player within the next two to three seasons. This past summer, playing with USA, albeit we had a very, very disappointing outcome, Anthony Edwards was the best player on the team, and it's funny because the going into that tor- going into that FIBA World Cup tournament, 
Anthony Edwards was expected to come off the bench, but then he made such an impression on the coaches that he ended up being in the starting five. And then when the tournament ended, everybody realized that he was the best player on the team. Anthony Edwards, the Minnesota Timberwolves, they absolutely got a gem with this player. Um, incredibly athletic. Maybe his fourth season, fourth, fifth season in the league. He's already been to the playoffs, so he has that playoff experience. And... There's been numerous quotes from him saying that he wants to be the best player on the team, saying that he wants to win a championship, saying that he wants to win MVP. So you know the competitive drive that he has. But going back to Kilbert Arena's comments, talking about how the Knicks organization should try and um, attract those two talents. Again, I'm not sure about what the contracts are. I don't know. What, I don't know what the contracts are from the top of my head. But as far as Anthony Edwards, I think all Knicks fans would 100% be on the bandwagon if the Knicks trying to attract him. Pairing, pairing him up with Jalen Brunson, just that alone would excite us. But going back to Gilbert Arena's critique of the New York Knicks organization, I mean, I'm sorry to say, but he does have a point. Um, we haven't really been able to attract marquee talent, and I've always wondered why, being from New York, and I've said this in numerous videos, if you're a player that comes out to the media and says that they want to come to New York, one, that's going to win over New York Knicks fans automatically off rip. Two, if you actually come to the Knicks and you actually put together a decent career, and what I mean by that is consistently going to the playoffs, hopefully consistently making deep playoff runs. Now, of course, we also got the player also has to depend on the organization and make sure that the organization is trying to put that best player in the best situation possible. But if all that comes together and that player is able to make deep playoff runs, get to the playoffs, maybe Eastern Conference Finals or NBA Finals, that player is going to look like a god in New York. Look at how we treat Patrick Ewing. Patrick Ewing went to one one NBA Finals, technically two, but during that run with against the San Antonio Spurs in 1999-2000, he was hurt, so he didn't get to play in it. But when he, when he was in his prime and when he went to the Finals against Hakeem in 94 and they lost in six, Look at how we treat Patrick Ewing. Now he's royalty in New York. He walks into the garden. He gets standing ovations. He goes to restaurants. He doesn't pay for, pay for meals. And I understand that the New York market is unlike any other market in the world. You, you're going to have an incredible criticism. You're going to have incredible pressure. But if you're able to rise above that pressure, then your career is going to be golden. And I, as, as much as, I don't want to say hate, but as much critique that I give Carmelo, one thing that I will give Carmelo is that he wanted to come to the Knicks, and when he was basically getting dog piled on for the horrible job that Phil Jackson did, and Phil Jackson was trying to put a lot of the blame on Melo, Melo kept it super professional, he kept it moving, and now Melo's looked at as one of the all-time great Knicks. Um, that's a that's a topic for another that's a topic for another video, in my opinion. But Overall, Gilbert Arenas had some choice words for Julius Randle, for the OJ Ananobi trade, and for the Knicks organization as a whole. But a lot of the things he said, I don't think it was him jumping out the window. Some of the things he said had some merit to it. But let me know Let me know what you guys think. Leave it in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about Gilbert Arenas uh, dogpiling on the Knicks. Do you think he had a point, or do you think he's just completely talking out of left field? Let me know in the comments. But that's it for today's video, guys. We'll check you out on another one. Until next time, peace.